Wait a minute. Wait a minute. When it's just you, well, times can be tough. It's Chris again with Multi Tank Addiction back again on another live stream. That's right. Today we are going to keep working on John's arowana for KG Tropicals. When I am complete with this drawing, it will be available for purchase on the website multitankaddictions.com. So if you are interested, head on over there. Great big hi to Mike. First one in the chat. Thank you very much for stopping by. Lurking in the background. I know how that is. I got. I came into the fish room at like 3.45. And I was like, oh, nobody's going to be able to hear me over the tanks. So it was a mad dash to top off the African cichlid tank and the 125. Daryl Deemer's in the house. Miss Candy is in the house. Candy, did you see that I, I did a, a little section on you on, on my Sunday stream? Hopefully you did. Hopefully you gained some subscribers because that's really ultimately the goal. I was trying to get more people to come over and check your channel out. I didn't know whether or not you had heard or not because you said you were you had to go take care of something. So... Hopefully everybody is having a wonderful week. You had a safe and happy Labor Day yesterday. Uh, my daughter, my daughter came home. Hey, there he is. My daughter came home at like two o'clock for the barbecue for us to have dinner for barbecue, and <laughs> Scott <laughs> and. Uh, and then she left and went and had barbecue elsewhere. <laughs> I was like, what the heck, child? Don't you know if you're going to come home for the barbecue, the point is that you eat the actual barbecue. All right, whatever. So we got John and we got Scott, my brother, from another mother in the house. And I'm going to go ahead and switch this camera over to... I have not started working yet, Candy. Couldn't see your new beard. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the 8 o'clock shower. You can't see mine as much because it blends in with my, uh, my face because it's so pasty white. Thank you so much, Scott. You know, I want to say a great big thank you to three people off the top of my head, just right here on the spot. A great big thank you to John, Scott, and Rack. Those three people over the last couple weeks have been promoting the living daylights out of my channel, and I really, really appreciate it. It is so amazing. In the last week, okay, this is since... Since John said something on his stream, uh, we went from 581 subscribers to 616, I believe, is the last check that I checked. That is amazing. That is a huge bump. So I really, really, really appreciate it. But you guys are not here to hear me go on about John and Scott and Rack. You're here to watch me draw a fish. So let's get to that. <laughs> All right, so I did a little bit more to it to kind of improve it a little bit. And let's see which pen this is. This is the, the B. And, okay, B is brush. We don't want to use the brush yet. We want to do these lines. So. <laughs> Scott. All right, we got a little few more people in here, so I'm going to say a great big hi to everybody. Uh, let's see here. We got, uh, of course, Candy. Everybody loves Candy. Um, Shelby Ray Lane, how you doing? Anna with the Cove. Big D Smokes in the house. And 
Quantum Star Aquatics. Always says hi to me every time he sees me in the chat. Love that. Thank you. And that's pretty much everybody. So let's go ahead and let's make some black. And it, it's kind of funny because this is the easiest thing you can possibly do to vastly improve a drawing. And I never did this before until I did the arowana drawing. And I did that all in black and white. Chewie's like, wonder who that's for. Well, I asked him on his stream if that I said, hey man, your fish room's looking kind of bare. You need some fish art. What would you want me to make? And he said he wanted a silver arowana. And then I I said, well, I can't just have just one drawing for you guys so I'll make your wife a drawing and she wanted a discus so after this drawing I will have the discus to do and then I will ship it off with a couple extra drawings and then and then I've got Chewy wanting me to do something for uh, for Aquashella, I believe. It may be for the AE. To help Project Piava. And I'll be happy to do that, Chewy. Uh, you mean my favorite fish? <laughs> Actually, Chew, it's not for Scott. I said... Uh, Scott ordered the uh, the arowana drawing. You guys have seen. Well, here's here's half of it, and I sent him two. I sent him one on a lower quality piece of paper. Oops, uh, let's flip that over. This is the Jardini and the back half of the silver arowana. But sent him two because one of them didn't come out as good as I wanted it to. Well, that's cool. You got another Alpha. I considered it. Seriously, John, I did consider going to Alpha, but I was like, wait a second. Might want to get my first paycheck <laughs> from this new job. My new job, I actually start my first day is um, this Friday, and then I have, uh, it's like orientation on Friday. And then Saturday, I have to go to Tigard, which is about a 45-minute drive from here, to do the their company-wide, like, welcome to the family type. It's similar to an orientation, but it's, like, a company-wide thing. And, and then, actually, tomorrow, on Friday, the, uh, the manager is going to talk to me about what what hours I want to work and all of that. Pretty much whatever I want to do, she's willing to give me. <laughs> Thank you, Scott. John, I think Scott's starting to get a little bit jealous, bro. <laughs> That's okay. Scott's my brother from another mother. I like John, but I haven't adopted him yet. Scott, on the other hand, I, I just love Liz and, and Scott, so he ain't got nothing to be jealous about. Although, Scott, I do get really jealous when you start talking, talking up funky fresh Aquafunk. 
Yeah. But I guess, you know, your bromance with him was has been a lot longer than the one with me. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Oh, John, that's that's hilarious. Oh, John, it's funny. Okay, so see the difference. This is pencil. This is ink. Makes a huge difference. <laughs> it makes a huge difference in in the line work. And it makes it so much easier to make crisp, beautiful lines. I just got to remember that it's not a pencil. So I don't have to press it into the paper. Wouldn't matter if you were one day older than me. Yeah. I did the old man joke. Like, I think I did the old man joke on his stream on Sunday. <laughs> so. The old man joke's always a fallback. I have not seen Pam today. I haven't seen Pam today either. Of course, I've only been on one stream. Uh, by the way, John, I did like your video on what the whole subscription thing was about. I really appreciate that. Nobody has really described what that's all about. And it makes sense for each channel that gets does those subscription thingies to describe it and explain what it's about because it's different for every channel. It's basically Patreon, but in YouTube. So there's really no use for Patreon once you hit a thousand subscribers. You get your advertising and your Patreon all in one. So. Brian P., how are you doing today? Hope everything's going well. Time to pull out the old pink eraser. And see, once you get the line work done, you just run over it real quick with a pink eraser. So you get any lines you may have like been just ever so slightly off on out of there so that they're not even visible also you can get any smear marks you might have left on the paper out of there yeah <laughs> watching the yankees awesome another thing you want to remember for those of you that may or may not know these erasers get dirty See you know, the black on the tip there? Nine times out of ten, it's literally dirt. And you can just wipe it off or scrape it off. You can wipe it off on your shorts or whatever. And then bam. Good to go. All right. No. I will not be at Aquashella. What happens is... Chewy wants to uh, put one of my drawings up available for auction to help Project Piaba at Aquashella. And I am more than happy to do a special drawing just for that. We just got to figure out what we're going to draw, what we want to draw, and then I will be starting on that as soon as I'm done with the discus. This has got. This has got two more stages. We got line work, and then we got coloration, and then 
we got a signature and then it'll be done so in actuality this drawing will more than likely be done probably oh I don't know four hours total at the most maybe two hours um, I'm not filling in the gaps with the scales I'm leaving this actually the way it is um, so this is actually what the drawing will look like just with color and black lines all the lines will be blacked out so that it'll be nice and dark and beautiful the only thing that I have to to do actually before I send it is I have to get it scanned so that I can put it on the web page for prints I love it, Jay's Meta. <laughs> Multi-talented artist. <laughs> That's hilarious. All right. So we got this. I uh, mentioned... I mentioned on my live stream, sorry, I was reading the chat. I mentioned on my live stream that uh, I needed at least one more segment for the uh, the Sunday stream, and Miss Science Girl came up with the same idea that had popped into my head hours before I had asked that question, and that was. A product review a product review seg segment so I will be getting the that fine-tuned probably this week the great thing about this new job is that I am going to be she guaranteed that I will be off every Tuesday no later than 4 p.m. so that I can come back home in time to do my stream and she guaranteed that I will always have Sundays off so that I can do my live stream and do the church thing and all of that so really happy about that that's <laughs> chewy yeah, the, the stream that Scott didn't show up to. I'm sure Scott was busy. Brian's leaving. Brian, you have a great day. Thank you for stopping by. I really appreciate it. That's correct, Scott. Tuesday is Fish Art Tuesday. So it's fart. You got a fart. You know how much, how much Aqua Funk loves to focus on the farts. Well, Fish Art Tuesday, buddy. That's actually what it was meant to be. Joe Coffee, how you doing? Mark Hill, that is a great option. I do have. Um, a, a medium sized green Texas cichlid in my 300 gallon aquarium so the ability to be able to take a pretty good high quality picture is really high my adult my full grown male that I had uh, passed away a couple weeks ago I'm not quite sure what caused it he, uh, he was just I found him floating the next morning he was doing fine one day and the next day he was dead which sucked because when you get into the big cichlids hey this is something most people don't talk about I was just talking about you science gal but this is something that most people don't talk about with big big cichlids and big fish <laughs> has anybody thought about what you're gonna do with disposing of the old the old big fish when it passes away 
I mean, some of these fish are actually food fish where they're from. Like the Oscar is the Amazon's version of a bass. Well, along with the bass, but there's an actual market for Oscars in the food in the food field, in the food market. Hi Susan, I see you. I didn't I didn't miss you, Susan. I saw you. I'm just uh trying to it's a lot easier to draw when I'm looking at the paper. <laughs> but yeah. That green Texas cichlid was 10 inches long and, and 8 inches tall. And he died. Oh. I had to. Unfortunately, he did. The only fortunate thing about him dying was he died on Thursday and, and Friday's garbage day. You buried him in the backyard? Yeah. I, I just threw the Texas cichlid away. I was sad. Big Mr. B's in the house. Buried in the garden, Mike says. Yeah, but think about this. I mean, you got, you got these arowana. I got a Giardini. My Oscars are currently my biggest fish in my tanks, my Oscars. But my, uh, my Red Devil... Old Red over there, he's a uh, he's taking up that a close second behind the Oscars right now. I haven't really been looking at Sammy the Saratoga, also known as an Ar a Jardini. Oh, really been looking at uh, the Sam at Sammy all that much lately and so I looked at I actually sat down and stared at Sammy for about 10 minutes before the stream and Sammy is noticeably bigger and here's the, the kicker Sammy is a noticeably prettier now I know that you look at these silver arowana are kind of a, a, a grayish silver and the Jardinis are kind of olive drab almost they're just they look plain they might have a little bit of color in the fins but you look closely at Sammy and every single scale has like a red dot on it throughout the entire body it's it's quite beautiful and i couldn't believe it because i had never noticed it before but yeah sammy's pretty so i got a little a little trick when you're doing this on the back you know these scales are not going to be perfectly flat so really important that you add a little bit of height to it so that when you erase the pencil lines, which I need to get a piece of paper under my hand. Oh, piece of paper under my hand. I put it in the tablet. There it is. Pencil, pencil starting to rub off. When you erase the pencil line, you'll actually see the bump of the scale then, and it actually improves the quality of the drawing. What's up with Victor? Well, All right. 
Let's get these these scales highlighted. Another important thing when drawing with line work, complete solid lines. Always complete solid lines. So anytime you have a line, try to avoid stopping unless there's some place that you can safely stop without it being noticeable that you stopped. Like, don't stop right here. Stop right here because there's a change in direction, so it won't be noticeable. Gives you a smooth transition and a smooth line. Uh, my male betta has eggs in his nest. Congratulations, Zoe Kitty. And Jay's better room is planning on adding a hybrid cichlid to his better room. And I can guess what that is. And that, I would, if I were to guess, that would be um, flower horn. I think you're going to get yourself a flower horn. Don't get me wrong, I've had two flower horns. One lived a lot longer than the other did, but neither one of them lived to adult size, unfortunately. One of them died of a fungus infection that I just couldn't beat. So, be sure to have meds available. Cause he got a fungus affection and there was <laughs> I tried and is that that it is it is amber hey amber how you doing Big City Bettas is in the house. Alright, I refuse to keep any more cichlids, but I'm gladly keeping more bettas. See, and I refuse to keep any more bettas because they like to jump out of their tanks. And it don't matter if you got a lid on the tank or not. They still find a way. They're worse than arowana. I know that the Giardini is a, has a reputation of being a jumper too. But I'll be, I'll be honest with you. My Oscars jump more than that Giardini has. And once I get... Once he gets big enough to go in the 300 with the Oscars... He'll, uh, I'll have a different lid for one, one of the panels, but that whole lid is going to be held down with about 50 pounds worth of uh, weights and stuff. I've got, I was planning on buying some weights. Scott's uploading a video, so he's in lurker mode. Make it. There we go. All right, we got a couple more pencil lines here in the scales. Just added fish to my 55 this week. I'm loving it right here in the office room with me. That's cool. Hey, Candy, I went upstairs to feed my daughter's lizard um, Sunday, Sunday morning-ish. It was about lunchtime. 
That bearded dragon saw me open the cage and ran straight at me. I was like, you know what? This is the last time. She's going to have to find somebody else to come over here and feed this damn dragon. He knew what was up, and he went for it. I was like, if you get out, first of all, my daughter's going to kill me. Secondly, <laughs> you're the cat. There's a cat that lives in that room, too. So he gets out. That cat's going to have lizard for dinner. So... <laughs> But, yeah, I, I got it all situated. I moved quickly. I actually, I don't mind geckos. The bearded dragons, though, something about the whole being prickly and all of that. I don't know what it is about bearded dragons. I more dislike snakes than anything else, which is funny because as a kid, I didn't have a problem with picking up garter snakes, but as a child, I was also scared by my uncle, who's from southern Missouri, that told me about rattlesnakes and water moccasins and you got to be careful when you go swimming out there. And I'm like, yeah, no. And that's part of the reason why I live in the Pacific Northwest, where the most dangerous thing we have here are spiders. There are no poisonous reptiles of any kind on this side of the Cascades. So it is. It is literally safe. <laughs> I don't like dead air. Every snake is poisonous in my book. My grandma was bit by a water moccasin the story born. Yeah, I I don't dig poisonous snakes at all. Not my cup of tea. So here's a little trick. If you do have to stop, like I stopped in that line, you go back about a half an inch and then you start again. And when you get to the other end of a line, try to go over a little bit so that you can't tell where they connected. I had planned on having a reptile room till I had room in my house being overrun with poisonous snakes. Yeah, no. You missed half the stream. Well, I'm, all I'm doing is inking today, probably. I'm hoping to get a little bit of color in. You guys may or may not know this, but the image of the silver arowana is blue on the bottom half of this fish and there's like a peachish pink going through the scales on the top of the back so this fish is quite colorful and I gotta figure out a way because I really wanted to use you know like they have gold leaf I wanted to get something similar to gold leaf to do this fish in But I couldn't find silver leaf. So, I mean, I could probably order it, but probably be best if I just stick with my colored pencils. Don't want to do no experiments with stuff I've never used before on such an important commission to me. 
You know what? I can't wait to see it finished either. I bet it's going to look freaking awesome. <laughs> see, the funny thing is that I just, I just follow what I draw. I, I follow what my heart says. So I actually don't know what the drawing's going to look like when I start it. I hope it looks like the original image, obviously, but I don't know where that's going to lead me. Platinum scaling causes that, and the gold on top means the fish has had a little tanning done. It's all in the lighting. Yes. You're getting too old for that stuff. Not when you're a kid at heart, Mr. B. Well, let me tell you, though, getting old, it's, it's very real to me right now, though. I went dove hunting today. We walked 45 minutes one way, sat for about an hour waiting for Dove to show up, which we never got one, which was really annoying because I had gotten so good at my hand calls. I don't know if you guys, I'm going to show you a little trick. Watch this. Put your hands together, right hand on top. Close it so that you got like a little bitty crack of light going through. Close your hand. Kind of seal it up. Make a ball. There you go. Chris's hunting tricks. <laughs> Why buy a dove call when you've got one in your hands? Congratulations, Mr. B. I do not want to be a grandpa for at least, well, until I'm at least Scott's age. <laughs> no, I got to be in my 50s. That's my, my, my rule. So I've already told my daughter, because she's the, uh, well, I got to tell, tell my stepson too. But... My daughter has a very serious relationship with a boyfriend that I, well, if you've known me for any experience, any period of time, you know I do not like the kid. But I'm starting to come around because he's realized that he's never going to get my approval until he gets a job. He's in his 20s, and he's never had a job yet in his life. I'm like, come on, man. Be a man. Stop being a millennial. I mean, a kid. So. Chewie's glad he's a fossil. <laughs> I had my first job when I was 15 years old. So it, it confuses me that anyone could get to their 20s without having a job, at least one job already. <laughs> okay. Except for Joe Coffee 9476. He's not a jobless bum. You know, I was I'm I've been on a like a two and a half week vacation since I got laid off. So I did get a job right away. I mean I got a job within about a week. But then they told me I had to wait a week before I could do my orientation, so and then the next orientation was going to be like a month and a half from now. 
And I was like, no, 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 I'll drive to Tigard. I will drive 45 minutes one way to, to get to this orientation. Because I need money. I got, I got all of the, I got all the bills except for the rent. My wife does the rent. I do everything else. So, <laughs> and she, she just barely does the rent. All right. There's our line work. It is, it is pretty, but it's not as pretty as it could be because you can see pencils. See pencil marks, and I don't like pencil marks, so we're gonna erase these pencil marks. Get these lines out of here, so that and hopefully they'll go all go to go away to where you can't even tell they were there in the first place. It's so funny because I'm sitting here at my desk and I'm doing this and right in the right hand, right in the eye, right side of my eye, all I can see out of the corner of my eye is my really, really mean red lab, or no, my red zebra African cichlid. It's an Mbuna and he is chasing everything in that tank. I don't even have to look up at him and I can see the yellow flash going back and forth out of the corner of my eye. So here's the question. We got, um, we got most of the pencils off here. Let's get some of this stuff. There we go. Oh gosh. Missed the spot. Should we do the outside? This outside here, this here, this here. Should we get that first? I think we should, but I want to get you guys' opinion. Um, if we get that outside coloration, at least then we'll get some color on here. Because this is all going to be sort of a very faint blue that you may not be able to see with this camera. This is lab... Lack, that looks like lake. Lack blue violet. Sort of a blue violet, and I like it, and that's the color that I plan on using. I'm going to burnish it in. Let's see what it looks like when I burnish it. Oh, let's see, absolutely. So, let's see here. Where is my, there it is. Ooh, that may be too dark. All right, let's do that outside edge. So we know that one of the colors in KG Tropicals is this blue. And we know that one of the other colors at KG Tropicals is probably closest to uh, orange neon. Would you say? We got our, our blue and our orange. I know it gives sort of a sheen like it's metallic, but it's not a top metallic. So, let's see here. Pull up my Fish Art Tuesday folder. Go to the live streams. I made a cool picture that was an idea, which has 
<laughs> it's all fun and games until Scott gets a black eye. So. Let's see what this looks like on a piece of paper. That piece of paper's got too much stuff on the back of it. Whoa, not the right orange at all. Let's see here. We're going to go more with a reddish orange. Rogue Permanent. Not the right kind of orange either. How about just orange? This is orange. And it's the right orange. This is blue. And it's the red blue. Fish Tank Barn is in 15 minutes. That's why I got a goatee, Scott. So that it looks like I have an actual chin. <laughs> That's exactly why I grew out my goatee. So don't take that the wrong way. Because I'm not saying that you don't have a chin. I'm saying that. Oh, thank you, John. I'm saying that I don't have a chin, and that's why I grew up my goatee, Scott. You guys, you guys are killing me with that stuff. All right, let's put some color on this. Let's, let's let's do that voice too while we're at it. Put some color on this. Make us make this noticeably focused into one spot. Get some sort of color going on here. Okay, so since this circle is not big enough to put kgs logo noticeably behind it I am going to do half blue half orange and what I'll do is I'll try and shade the blue into the orange here KG who? This is wow, everybody's picking on Scott. Come on, guys. Be, be nice. Anna's with the is your blankie unraveling? And everybody's calling him old. Oh, come on, man. You guys are really acting like siblings. Let's get some orange in here so that this looks pretty. I totally heard that and it made me sad it made me sad in my heart made me very sad in my heart and you know what's messed up is that all right so here's the deal Scott was talking about how he he didn't he didn't like the negativity that he was receiving, and I can understand that. Cause that very same morning, Sunday morning, I got a 
delightful message on one of my videos saying that I completely plagiarized a web page. And it really irked me. I deleted it. I just deleted the... I, I blocked the person and I deleted the, the video because I didn't want to deal with it. But what really irked me was the fact that that person did not go down to the bottom of the page. Because had they gone to the bottom of my page for that the description for that video, they would have seen all information provided was directly from this web page and a link to the web page. It's hard not to dwell on it. You have a tendency when you put your heart into it, Joe, when you're putting so much of your heart into these videos and these streams and, and the artwork and all whatever thing that I do here, it's hard for me not to take it personally. Because even if it's not personal, it's... It, it still feels it. It still feels personal. So... I'm not, I'm not at that point where they accused me of plagiarizing, Chewy. They said that I did not come up with the content. And I was like, well, actually all of the videos are mine. The video content was mine. The information, because I didn't know a lot about the fish. The actual information came from a web page. And I credited the web page at the bottom of the description. It said, all information came from this web page. So, it just irked me. That's all it was. It really it irked me. And it wasn't a, a hard-hitting video. It was, it was like... It, six months old and it had 200 views so it wasn't like a huge video my species spotlights generally exceed a thousand that's that's actually ironically that's my strength and that's the one thing that i don't do anymore is videos so maybe i should change that i don't know filter mod videos right Yeah, I would agree with that. Certain people come across as being one thing, when in person they're actually a completely different thing. Um, there's there's definitely certain people on YouTube that have a YouTube persona. Their personality is one thing on YouTube and a completely different thing in person. Yeah, I've noticed that in mine, actually, Scott. There's people that, that used to be in my streams all the time that I haven't seen in a while. And that was, I, I noticed that that was because of my content change. I changed, I changed the morning stream. Got rid of the coffee talk with Chris. And a lot of my subscribers stayed subscribed but they just I never saw them anymore I would occasionally see them in the videos you know making a comment but I lost a lot of people that I talked to troop cichlids tropical treasures welcome to the stream I've never seen you in here and I'm very glad that you are here Oh, I'm completely jealous, Scott. <laughs> no, you're more than welcome to rant in the chat, dude. I'm, I'm agreeing with a, a lot of stuff. And you know what? I'll be honest. When I first, when I first watched some of Scott's vid or John's videos, Scott, I didn't agree with everything he said. 
and I didn't I didn't really watch a lot of his videos. But then I actually got the opportunity to talk to him. Not in person or anything like that, just talking to him in the chat and him responding to me on his on one of his streams. And I was like, you know what? This guy's actually pretty nice. And then I went back and I looked at some of those videos that I completely disagreed with. And I came to the realization, it's all about your focus. It's literally all about your focus. Sammy is getting bigger. I am actually starting to worry ever so slightly about those uh, electric blue Acara. Because Sammy is not big enough to fit the Acara in his mouth yet, but he's getting bigger. So, as I was saying, focus. I went back and I watched John's streams. Or watched one of, a couple of John's videos that I knew I disagreed with him. And I realized, it's about my focus. I'm focusing on the one or two things that I disagree about on his video and not focusing on the other nine or ten things that I do agree about. So just remember when you're going into somebody's stream and you've got that internet immunity as you think you have, and you go to comment on somebody's channel and you're about to make a bad comment, you know, like this is, you're blah, 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 blah. You're full of it. You don't know what you're talking about. Blah, 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 blah. Think about how much research goes into each one of these videos. Even if it's just, looks like it's just thrown together. Um, I spend hours and hours researching my videos before I put them up to make sure that I have the most, most recent information. And, uh, yeah, that's all. And remember, you may disagree with somebody about one thing, but you also probably agree to, about something else. So instead of focusing on the negative, focus on the positive. King and Queen Sickless, yes, what you said, stand for, and you are basically one of the only YouTubers that is truly involved with CARES at a level, and Susan mentioned you on, your str on her stream. Yes, she did. I really, I, I haven't really had many nasty people, but that one on Sunday really, it was like hit, being hit below the belt. I have a thing about being called a liar. I, it, it's a pet peeve, a really big pet peeve of mine. It, it'll, it'll trigger me to call me a, a liar. So, because I am, I'm always as truthful as humanly possible to a fault actually. But, anyways, we have three minutes left. And I'm trying to get this blue in here. Hopefully, I didn't, like, make John think that I was talking bad about him. Because I, I actually like John. And everybody knows I love Scott. He's been in, like, every Sunday stream for the last two months. Well, since I started my Sunday streams back up again, he's been in almost every one of them. But that's all. That's all I'm going to say about that subject. Adding that information to my personal arsenal. No. Yeah. Yeah, you, you do that, Pam. I know exactly what you're talking about, Pam. You know what's funny is that I, I have a, I do trace this stuff. I mean, it's not, it's not completely 100% freehand. But when I freehand these last week, they lined up with the actual scales of the picture. And I couldn't believe it when I went back and I checked it. So we got two minutes until uh, this stream is over. And our buddy Mike Howe at the Fish Tank Barn it still has a hundred over me. I'm working on that. I'm trying to catch up to him. Um, Mike Howe starts his stream well in one minute. 
So I'm going to go ahead and close this out now. I don't want to stop because when I stop, I stop until next week. But I don't want to overlap Mike either because we've, uh, we've got this nice arrangement going on where neither one of us steps on each other's toes. So there we go. We got the, the, the orange and the, and the blue for KG Tropicals theme coloration. Uh, great big thank you to everybody who joined the stream. And a big thank you to Science Gal for that idea on Sunday's stream. Um, I just want to say personally from the bottom of my heart, I really appreciate all of you guys coming to the stream. It means a whole lot to me. Mike's stream is about to start, so I don't want to cut it short. But just remember, guys and gals, we're feeding the addiction one tank at a time through education and inspiration. Please hit the subscribe button and the like button. And if you feel like it, leave a comment later. And I love you guys, and you have a great, great week. Bye now. When it's just you, well, times can be tough.